Wasp, Quantumania is the 31st cinematic theatrical released in MCU history. So let's talk about it. So this video, I didn't have very long to film it, so I'm going to try and do this in one take. But Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania is the third Ant-Man film. It follows the Van Dynes, Cassie Lang and Scott Lang venturing into the quantum realm, not by their choice and meeting the Conqueror. Okay, let's get into it. Let's talk about the two, kind of, um, the two title characters, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Paul Rudd is absolutely charismatic as Ant-Man. He's incredible as Ant-Man, he's always been. He's still not aged at all since he first started the role. He's incredible. The action scenes he does this with movie, specifically with, also this is gonna be a spoiler review by the way, um, specifically with Kang was amazing. There were times where he was getting beat up so much I thought he was gonna die. And he was genuinely just incredible in this movie. Also, sorry, I'm veering off this. We can probably be edited, but I'm not doing that today because I do not have very long. I'm going to give this movie, I know not everybody loves this movie, and the Rotten Tomatoes score for critics is like 40 something, and it's like 80 something fans. I'm nearing more towards the 80 something. I have three and a half on Letterbox. I'd give it between a seven to a seven and a half out of ten. I really liked it. I really liked the themes. I really liked a lot of the comedy. Not all of it landed, but I really liked most of it. I, I thought visually, given the fact that 95% of this was filmed on a green screen and maybe under one of the Mandalorian, like those stages they filmed the Mandalorian on, sounds they just, I thought this was really, really good and surprisingly good. Okay, um, as for the Wasp, um, she didn't really do much for the first half of this movie. So it's almost, I was always thinking, was there even a point of having Ant-Man and the Wasp? It would always be better of, because first of all it was called Ant-Man, the second one was Ant-Man and the Wasp. It would always be better if it was Ant-Man and the Quantumania, or Ant-Man and Quantumania. It was just, yeah. Kang is absolutely brilliant. Jonathan Majors is incredible. The role he sets on the future of the MCU. He had incredible action. The, the shot where he walks up to Kang and they talk about when he basically says like, oh, you're an Avenger, have I killed you before? His cloak reminded me of Darth Vader in Empire. And that like, it honestly, you could have gone the do, 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 do. If I didn't know this was Ant-Man film, I genuinely could have believed that it was Darth Vader. It was that menacing. I just, also, I'm so excited for him. Um, post credit scenes, mid credit scenes, he's gonna be in Loki season two. The Council of Kangs, I'm so excited for. There's one that I think could be in Moon Knight season two, and I've said to people through as well, I think Kang is just gonna pop up everywhere and show these Avengers that they have got something to deal with and they need to be more prepared than they were last time. The visuals were really good, um, yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer's character, I enjoyed a lot more this time. I mean, she was good in Ant-Man and, and the Wasp, but she didn't really have an arc, and she didn't really have a much of a story, but she had a definite arc in this film. I thought her backstory was really good. I thought the cold open with her was really good, and I liked that there was some secretive to her character, because if all this stuff had happened to her in the quantum realm, you wouldn't necessarily be telling your family about all this, because this was quite traumatizing stuff. And I love, um, did I call her Michelle Yeoh? I might have actually called her Michelle Yeoh. Um, I love Michelle Pfeiffer's character, but yeah, she's just, yeah, she's incredible, and, um, she was really good in this movie. Um, yeah, Wasp I Hope didn't have time to do at the beginning, but towards the middle half and the end, in the final kind of thing, she did have more to do, which I enjoyed. This movie was weird. There was lots of odd creatures which are wacky, which is why I think maybe some people might compare themselves to Thor, Love and Thunder, was because they were both quite weird and wacky, but the little blob creature that talked about how many holes he had was really funny. And I thought all these kind of, these ravagers were like funny, and they were really cool. Okay. Let's talk about the elephant, or the head in the room, MODOK. Um, I don't really have much care towards MODOK. My dad actually told me he watched a like, TV show in the 80s with MODOK in it, an animated show. Apparently he was in a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle episode. I don't know if that's true or not. But I liked him, I guess. I liked more when we didn't have to see his hideous head. I thought the head was the worst part of it. Yeah, it was not very good. It did not look very good. Um, as in visually, that was the only thing. I mean, I don't even think it's special effects. I think it's more of the design wasn't very good. I think they should have kept his helmet off the whole time. But I get they were having um, Darren Cross as in the villain for the first one, which I actually like that twist. I like because we never really... He died quite quickly in the first Ant-Man film. But I do like that we got more of a redemption and we learned more about him and his character and everything to do with it. Um, Bill Murray's character was very much a cameo. Do not go into this film. Obviously, you've seen it if you're watching this. But I'm very glad I didn't go into this film expecting his character to be a big part of the film he's in it for 10 minutes at the most they drink at this bar and i think this is why a lot of people are comparing it to the bar because they have a bar that's quite like the cantina and i guess it's a desert which and there are ships which kind of look like x-wins 
Um, so that's why people are comparing styles, but I don't think it really deserves that comparison. As not this film is bad, but I just, it doesn't feel like Star Wars. It doesn't look like Star Wars. It, the themes aren't really like Star Wars. I guess there was a woman who was like stranded on a desert. Maybe a bit like Kenobi and then goes back to her, I don't know, goes back to her family. I don't know. But yeah, um, I think it was perfect. I mean, there was no Louise. There was, I was not some of the characters that I was necessarily loved from the first film. I get why they weren't in it because it would have been a little bit weird. Like, it was always slightly strange having Jimmy Woo in it, but I get, it was nice having him and I do really enjoy his character. And I think, yeah, he, he was alright in it. But I think if we, I think Cassie's mum could have been in it. They could have put her in the prison scene. But I'm glad they weren't at the family dinner or anything because I don't think they would have worked well if they also went down to the quantum realm because they don't really know much about the Ant-Man stuff. Oh, I haven't talked about Hank yet. Um, he was, he had probably the least about to do. And my dog is barking, which is brilliant. At the start, he had more to do by the end and the stuff he did with the ants was really, really good. I'm talking louder because my dog is barking. But um, there was slight pacing issues and I saw people talk about thematic issues, the fact that Murdoch dies and they go and make a joke, which I was thinking in the cinema, they're gonna make a joke now. But I didn't hate it. I said like, I love a lot of this movie, Kang. But one thing, I really thought Scott wasn't gonna make it out in the babble thing. I slightly could have potentially preferred for him and Wasp to stay behind. And maybe they have to use the quantum realm for time travel and secret wars or the Kang Dynasty and then the Avengers pick him up or something. But yeah, I don't know. It just would have been nice if somebody died. I think maybe Hank should have died because I think he wasn't, I don't, I can't really see him being in the next Avengers movie because Mogul Douglas is quite old anyway as in to be doing this really action-packed role. But also character-wise, I can see, I can see Janet being in the next Avengers movie. Not as her main character, but maybe they potentially need somebody later down the road and she knows a lot about the quantum realm and there'll be some issues there she might not want to do it or something. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. I feel like somebody should have died. I know a lot of, sort of the creatures died, but I feel like one of my main characters should have died. It wouldn't have been Ant-Man. It wouldn't have been the Wasp. It wouldn't have been, well, Kang. We can talk about him. Is he dead? At the end of the film, which I really, I said a lot of people didn't like this, but I really liked the fact that Scott was like, he did die, right? No, 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 he, he's dead. I did kill an Avengers level threat, right? And I'm at them, right? And then it ends. And I, yeah. I don't know. Do we think he's dead or not? Because, like, could he be the main... I know there are thousands upon thousands of versions. Okay, we see that in the mid credit scene. But is he the main variant? That's what I'm not sure about. That's what I'm trying to figure out. But I can't talk about this with my friends that I've seen today. Because they've not said this yet. Which is really annoying me because I really want to talk to her about it. Because it was, there was so much, also they brought her incursions which made me really, really excited. Incursions where two worlds, um, the multiversal is having to do too much. They shift um, towards each other, essentially a road. And it essentially creates a battle earth which they fight on in Secret Wars. Which they might do in the movie. But yeah, they are my thoughts about the course of the It was pretty good. Obviously it's not as good as some of the films. There are some things I don't like about it. Modoc was weak. Um... There was slightly weak pacing. There was some slight weak visual effects right at the start. And it did take a little while to get into meeting Kang. But apart from that, I really enjoyed it. And it's actually stayed in my ranking. So usually when I rank an MCU film, I'll put it a lot higher than I think it actually is. But I thought I'd write it again today. And it's still saying that I've moved some other MCU movies around. I'm going to do a ranking list tomorrow. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in a new one soon. Bye.